talking about today, what the Lord has to say about the book of Second Chronicles chapter 33. Before we get started into that, we'll go ahead and get started into prayer. Come Lord Jesus, we invite you into this video today to speak through me everything you want us to know. Give us spiritual eyes to see the things you want us to see, spiritual ears to hear the words that are spoken today, a spiritual heart to be open and able to receive all that you have for us, Father. Give us wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and discernment about what we're about to read, watch, and listen to as we put on the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, feet of readiness, shield of faith, sword of the Spirit. If there's anyone we need to be praying for, speaking encouraging words to, and or listening to, just show us that person, Father God. We pray that you heal our bodies, minds, and spirits. Take away any and all distractions away from us so we can focus on you. We pray against any and all attacks of the enemy over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others, and the world. We pray for God's blessings over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others, and the world. We pray for God's favor over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others, and the world. We pray that you give us, our loved ones, our leaders, others, and the world godly and divine wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to make the right choices and decisions today, Father God, not only for the betterment of us, but others as well. And we thank you for that. And Father God, we pray that you guard and protect us and our vehicles, our loved ones and their vehicles, our leaders and their vehicles, others and their vehicles, and the animals as well as we're traveling to and from different locations. Just drive for us today, Father God. Send down our guardian angels to protect us. We thank you for them. Give them and us the rest and restoration we both need to do the work you've called us to do. Send down the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth today. We plead the blood of Jesus and pray Psalm 51 and 91 over us, our loved ones, our leaders, others, and the world. We pray for the safety of our cities and the people in them. We pray that you show mercy on us and heal our land. We come to you in repentance and ask that you forgive us of each and every sin, whether it be in word, thought, and or deed that we've committed against you, others, and or ourselves, as we forgive those who've sinned against us. We pray for all our enemies, our loved ones, and anyone listening today who has not yet accepted you as their Lord and Savior and would like to do so now. We pray John 3:16 over them. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only Son, that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So, if you prayed that prayer with me today, you can know that you're going to go to heaven someday with the rest of the people that accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. For it's not by works so that no man shall boast. And there's not enough good works that any of us can do to earn our way to heaven. It's only through that perfect sinless life that was Jesus being born, died, buried, and rising again for our sins and the sins of the world that any of us get to go to heaven. So, Father God, we thank you for this person that accepted you as their Lord and Savior. Help them in their daily walk and relationship with you to get into your word each and every day, which is the Bible and stands for basic instructions before leaving earth so they can discern between the truth and the lies and the truth will set them free. Help them to get into prayer with you each and every day. It's just like what we're doing now, talking to you, listening for your voice and obeying what you tell them to do and show them the gifts and talents that you've given them and how to use them for your glory to help those around them that are in need it's a god divine appointment that you're here today god brought you to this channel because he loves you so much he wants you to go to heaven someday to spend eternity with him and he knows every hair on your head he has it counted Every tear that you cried, he holds in his hands. He loves you more than anyone on earth could ever love you. So, Father God, I thank you for this person and everyone listening today. I pray all of this in Jesus' mighty name and all God's people said, Amen. 
All right, let's go ahead and get started into what the Lord has to say about the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 33. So if you have your Bibles and you'd like to follow along, go ahead and turn them to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 33 and we'll get started. Thank you. Manasseh was 12 years old when he began to reign. He reigned 50 and 5 years in Jerusalem, but did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, like unto the abominations of the heathen, whom the Lord had cast out before the children of Israel. For he built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had broken down, and he reared up altars for Baalim, and made groves, and worshipped all the host of heaven, and served them. Also he built altars in the house of the Lord, whereof the Lord had said, In Jerusalem shall my name be forever. And he built altars for all the host of heaven in the two courts of the house of the Lord. And he caused his children to pass through the fire in the valley of the son of Hinnom. Also he observed times and used enchantments and used witchcraft and dealt with a familiar spirit and with wizards. He wrought much evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. And he set a carved image, the idol which he had made, in the house of God, of which God had said to David and to Solomon, his son, In this house and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen before all the tribes of Israel, will I put my name forever. Neither will I any more remove the foot of Israel from out of the land which I have appointed for your fathers, so that they will take heed to do all that I have commanded them, according to the whole law and the statutes and the ordinances by the hand of Moses. So Manasseh made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to err and to do worse than the heathen, whom the Lord had destroyed before the children of Israel. And the Lord spake to Manasseh and to his people, but they would not hearken. Wherefore the Lord brought upon them the captains of the host of the king of Assyria, which took Manasseh among the thorns, and bound him with fetters, and I carried him to Babylon. And when he was in affliction, he besought the Lord his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his fathers, and prayed unto him, and he was entreated of him, and heard his supplication, and brought him again to Jerusalem, into his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew that the Lord he was God. Now after this he built a wall without the city of David, on the west side of Gihon, in the valley, even to the entering in at the fish gate, encompassed about Ophel, and raised it up a very great height, and put captains of war in all the fenced cities of Judah. And he took away the strange gods and the idol out of the house of the Lord, and all the altars that he had built in the mount of the house of the Lord, and in Jerusalem, and cast them out of the city. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, and sacrificed thereon peace offerings and thank offerings, commanded Judah to serve the Lord God of Israel. Nevertheless, the people did sacrifice still in the high places, yet unto the Lord their God only. Now the rest of the acts of Manasseh, and his prayer unto his God, and the words of the seers that spake to him in the name of the Lord God of Israel. Behold, they are written in the book of the kings of Israel. His prayer also, and how God was entreated of him, in all his sin, and his trespass, and the places wherein he built high places and set up grooves and graven images before he was humbled. Behold, they are written among the sayings of the seers. So Manasseh slept with his fathers and they buried him in his own house. And Ammon his son reigned in his stead. Ammon was two and twenty years old when he began to reign and reigned two years in Jerusalem. But he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Manasseh his father, for Ammon sacrificed unto all the carved images which Manasseh his father had made, and served them, and humbled not himself before the Lord, as Manasseh his father had humbled himself. But Ammon trespassed more and more, and his servants conspired against him, and slew him in his own house. But the people of the land slew all them that had conspired against King Ammon, and the people of the land made Josiah his son, king in his stead. And that was the end of what the Lord has to say about the book of Second Chronicles chapter 33. I hope you all enjoyed and were blessed by it today. And until next time, mm -hmm.